Hey everybody, it's time for a special guest episode of the Disc Only Podcast. Welcome to Disc Only Podcast, a podcast that asks all the hard-hitting questions such as, how does a saxophone talk? I'm Proton John. I'm Tom Fox, and the Tom.com was taken. I'm uh, I'm Stephen George, and Jared is no longer with us. He will be missed. And I'm a saxophone. Honk. <laughs> we we've replaced Jared with a saxophone. Yep. We had we had enough of rhythm, and we needed some more smooth jazz in our lives. So, um, I have I the saxophone incarnate have come to grace your ears with <laughs> actually everything. Wait. Hang Only on. speaking, no saxophone. I don't even have a saxophone. <laughs> <on here. laughs> Carlos is here. Yeah, I can. I can so those guys who don't that's know who are playing it, if you want, there we go. That's perfect. That's that's what we'll do for the rest of the show. Is just I, I, open Tom mouth saxophone, saxophone playing, huh? Oh, that, wow, this is strange. I do. Well, you fine. Know, I, I do. I've. Okay, well, I moved everyone. Oh no. I do. In, oh wow. <laughs> 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 that's why we don't normally do this. There, I'll move it over to my mouth because I've actually played tenor sax. So. Yep. Play them hot. Everyone gets a turn with Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it looked like it was made for your mouth, John. Ironic. I mean, like I said, well, I used to play tenor sax in high school. So I your had, icon's like, embouchure is very good, John. I thank just have you. to say. Take a penny, it's, leave it's a, a muscle penny. Man. Hot it's like riding cross a bike. Buns. <laughs> what? When did you? When did you play saxophone? Like when was, uh, when grade, was your heyday? When was your grade glory seven day? through twelve? So that would have been uh, ninety-seven through two thousand three. Wow. And did you like what? Um, I'm assuming you were doing it for like school. Did yeah. you do like so jazz I was, band? I was in jazz like band and, and concert band. Yeah. Oh. oh, man. I'm so glad that like that public school or just schools in general, like have that option for kids as like a way to discover music. Like, I mean, I wouldn't be here without public school. It's, Let's go public school. This is not a public Heck school. Heck yeah, education, um... baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like here, here's hoping like those stick around because, you know, those, uh, when when it comes to slashing things on budget, the arts are the first thing to go. Yeah, yeah. The funny thing is, my school wasn't a public school first; it was a Christian school. So oh. up to grade seven, uh, my school was a Pentecostal school for uh, for Christianity, and then uh, then our province got rid of uh, religious schools. So then they all just became public schools. <laughs> Oh, so then I just spent I, the rest of the, the rest of my uh, years like they literally mixed two schools together. So that suddenly my classes had like 20 kids I didn't recognize. I'm like, who are all these people? Well, I like the idea is one where it's just like so my province got rid of religion. <laughs> if only I like it was the, that easy. I, I like the headcanon that your school became atheist. <laughs> <laughs> like the school itself was like, no more. <laughs> I'm over it now. It was a phase. Jesus just rips himself down off the cross, takes the crucifix and walks out of the door. Whoa. Lonely man starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's on a pipe organ. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I heard pipe organ too much growing up. Same. I was raised Catholic. Oh, you had a way worse then. It was very loosely Catholic though. It wasn't it wasn't that bad. I only the I only ever heard it when I would go to my grandmother's place because for some reason my grandmother or grandfather would watch their church sermons on TV. It was the church that was down the street from where they lived. They just they didn't go to the church because <laughs> we were there visiting for dinner. So they're just like, all right, let's have it keep it on TV. And then eventually when like when when sermons far enough, we'll let the kids watch like cartoons. I I love that because then you 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 experience church, but you can pee on your toilet. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody like looks at you funny when you leave the pews in order to go to the bathroom. You know, it's so funny you mentioned that because the toilet at the church where I grew up at was so small. Like... <laughs> that is a vivid Specifically the toilet or the bathroom in general? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, okay, so small, small bathroom also has a small toilet in what? the small bathroom. Like a like a child's toilet well no no, no 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 let me like it was 
it was it was so strange like it was strange because it was like a urinal okay like maybe is this if this gets cut me off if this gets to be too much but it was like it was, <laughs> not on this show <laughs> all, right, all right awesome so it was a urinal there was only one urinal in this bathroom there was one stall with i think you know a perhaps small to normal sized toilet like that was acceptable in the stall but next to it there was a urinal that was like right next to the sink you know in this weird way so you could get them mixed up um Oh my god! <laughs> Yo, if you're taking the urinal, you can, you can get mixed up. If you're Are you sure it wasn't like a bidet? Off. No, it, it, my shirt wasn't. You, a bidet does. Okay, you can't confuse a bidet with a with wait with a I, sink. The bidet. I've like met some toilet. drunk people. The blood I've, of Jesus might have gotten my, a little tipsy. My grandparents had a uh, had a bidet that was like on the side of their toilet. So you had to like get up, move over to this thing, and ha and then and then have it do its thing. Oh, and it like was a, my a aunt sidecar, had that too. A sidecar bidet is that what that's referred to as? I, I guess so. <laughs> like it was I its just, own thing. I I just love that the discussion several minutes in went straight to a small toilet in a church. <laughs> but you could still hear the pipe organ from the small toilet. <laughs> and that was what was important about it. In, in fact, the, the pipe organ shared the plumbing with the toilet, so you can actually yeah, feel the vibration while you're you on know, the there toilet. Was this, there was this, like, so if you don't know how a pipe organ works, like, every note has its own pipe, which is why it's so big, especially if you have such a big rain. But there was, like, this one. What if there was, like, this one pipe that went to the sink, so when the keyboard just plays, like, this one note, like, <laughs> everything just, like, comes out of the sink if you're in the bathroom. It would seem <laughs> that Billy has been in the bathroom for too long. Let's hit the <laughs> note! Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the that's what the brown note is. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Oh Lord. Yeah, but I mean, like for real though, like pipe organs are like really really cool. One of some of like the biggest instruments in the world are pipe organs. Um, I had the opportunity to go to this. I think it was the Notre Dame Cathedral in Montreal, or maybe the Basilica or something like that. Um, and we watched like it, I, I was with with my girlfriend. We were like doing like a tour of the city with her friends and. There was like this light show in the cathedral that had, you know, it had like, you know, music piped in over speakers, but it was like synchronized with the pipe organ and the pipe organ. If you can imagine, like it was like it's this super, super tall thing, but it's behind you. So here you are looking forward at like this big mural of, you know, all these religious things that I don't understand, but they look cool. And behind you is like this giant wall of pipes that's like going that's, you know, producing this giant sound that you can really feel. And I think, um. I, I'm I'm a pipe organ stan. I I love pipe organs. I think that's important to share. Oh, they're great. Yeah, they're super it's just, great. It, it's too bad they're not convenient to carry around. <laughs> Got to carry them so, one 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 pipe yeah, at a time. You're clearly not <laughs> trying hard enough at that point. I mean, there's just there's there's too many things in life that are wonderful but hard to take from one location to another. Yeah. The best things yes. in life are not portable. <laughs> <laughs> there was, um, I feel like I saw something recently about a guy who had a pipe organ in his house. Um, but because of the way, because of how big it was, essentially the pipe organ was built around, or the, the house was built around the pipe organ. Yeah. Like there was just a room that had all these pipes in it. I wonder what the proximity of that person's home to their neighbors was. <laughs> because that matters a lot. Good morning, neighborhood! Da -da -da! Da -da 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 -da! I mean, like, that kind of feels like a benefit. But I can't also... tell if it's better or worse than, like, a rooster crowing, yeah. <laughs> and, then when, yeah and then when their sink clogs, they call a plumber. And the plumber co comes over and says, wow, you guys sure have some pipes here. I haven't seen these kinds of pipes before. Just works on the wrong set of pipes. <laughs> yeah. There's no water in these pipes. What's it's, going on? Yeah, these, these pipes are so dry. Do you guys even bathe? <laughs> <laughs> these aren't even and hooked he, up to anything. And, and then he leaves. You go to play the organ again. It starts going. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love, I could, I could like see you doing that in my my mind <laughs> like, such such force you Listen, could feel tom drowning if you're having if you're having issues with your plumbing you just gotta call the australian <laughs> plumbing service bidet mate oh my god <laughs> Wait, i love that 
I love that. I love that the idea of bidet mate. I was just in Japan and like every toilet was a bidet toilet. They're so far ahead of us. Yes. Yes. They have the they know the comforts of, of society. And pooping. <laughs> you know, I uh I don't know if I've talked about this on the show. It's possible cuz I don't recall anything I've ever said on this show. Um but I went to Japan two different times, once in 2016 and once in 2019. And each time was probably for like 10 to 14 days. And despite the massive amount of bidets, I never used one. <laughs> as as you were saying this, Stephen, Dan put in chat, Stephen visited Japan <laughs> twice without using a bidet. <laughs> so That's like an so, achievement yeah. that you have to unlock. So I... I I was just never put in a position where I had to use one, so I just never did. Are we going to then... acknowledge what was just put in chat right <laughs> now? <but laughs> That's why I got to whisper. Oh my god, I don't know if my mic picked that up at all. Shaka <laughs> Conroy just posted in our group chat, dude, bidets clean your teeth from the long way around. <laughs> Man, that's... I don't even know if he's live. Oh, I mean, he knows like that a... we're live. With it's the, like a uh... water pick, but like, the, but like a really, really reversed one. Yeah, but it, all, it also has to go, like, the long way as well through everything before it reaches the teeth. Mm. Anyway, I did finally use a bidet, but it wasn't until our friends Alex and Haley bought a bidet, and they were like, you have to use a bidet. They're like, it's insane that you went to Japan twice and you never used one. It's like, all right, I'll use it. So I did. And it was the, fine. What's the review? Okay, it's fine. <laughs> I was like, waiting for the review. Like, where's the score here? What are we doing? Where's the bidet meter here? It was it was fine. I I think the thing that was that I was confused by is I thought that because it wait. has like a dryer, I was like, oh, it will just completely dry, and it doesn't like completely dry. Like wait, you, you still filmed have to this? Use... Why is Chad saying you filmed this? Yeah, I filmed it. You filmed yourself using a bidet, <laughs> John. It was my first time using a bidet. <laughs> Steven, can it, can we use today as an intervention for your psychopathic behavior? Because you're starting to concern me, my dude. <laughs> This is an important milestone in his this life. This is an important there milestone. You go. Thank you, Carlos. Yes, it's it's the sort of thing that if you're experiencing something for the first time, it's nice to be able to revisit that and be like, oh yeah, what was it like when water shot up my ass? That's it. That's what it was yeah. like. It's okay. it's, yeah. al it's also not like he's got like a like an NFL camera like pointed in the bowl, being like, now here's yeah, here's where the water just, comes up and here's my bunghole. It's <laughs> just my face. It's a facial react. It's a it's it's honestly it's very artful. Um. You know, There's I feel like of... this this is why GoPros are made for situations like this. <laughs> to drop this. them down the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You know, for the for, for like the, the bidet shot. Like, that's what a GoPro is made for. Absolutely. I, I posted a a recent Penny Arcade comic that came out about bidets where he was talking how he, he was talking about when he activated it, he didn't realize that it um that it didn't turn off on its own. It's like <laughs> How long did it take for you? <laughs> At the end, last panel is him going too long, and he's on crutches. I, I didn't know that Penny Arcade saves each panel as a separate image, so I tried to open the entire thing in a new window to show it, and then I instead just got this frame here instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I grabbed the size of the bowl, bared down, and gritted my teeth. I mean, how long could it possibly last? Re later, I realized I had to turn. I had to be turned off manually. <laughs> They do that because of the um of a uh, uh, phone uh phone uh, ah, orientation. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, it. They're fine. They're fine. Like, and they're good. I would even say they're good. It's an improvement, probably over paper. <laughs> um, I mean, I still want to use paper afterwards because I don't want I don't want butt water being being on there when I pull my pants up. Did we just get an, an alert from Enema Blast? Did yeah, that yeah. just show up? Hell on yeah, screen? baby. We go. Kai gave it a sub to Enema Blast. There he, there he is, public enema number one. Wow. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Blast. Yeah. That is that is that is a good name. Wow. Carlos, you know, I, I you, you need to learn the, the lore and the the land of Twitch and how uh the dumbest names are always available, such as this gift sub go such as gave to water. water. There he is. Oh yeah. no, 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 no. I'm like I'm aware <clears throat> that these are available. I just like I'm just respecting the fact that like that what was it enema enema attack but enema you already forgot enema, it enema you enema meant so enema much blast. to you sorry enema sorry, attack sorry. Is great enema attack um, it was enema blast the, no no the, no let's stick with enema attack the, 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 <laughs> don, the don show the worst, 
as the uh, the worst uh, sequel to Tetris Attack I've ever heard of. <laughs> I'm just I'm just I'm just glad that I've been away, made aware that this name has been taken and there is available go. to draw attention to in chat. It's very good. <laughs> All right, we just got who comes up with these names and Bidet Man as well. Oh, and Public Enema <laughs> Number One. Yep, there you go. <laughs> This is the most oh, we've actually God. referenced the, the subs we get during the show instead. Yeah, funny yep. gift sub name. <laughs> funny gift sub name. Yes. Surprise colonoscopy. Oh, that. Oh. Man, the, that. Ooh. Oh, without, I, I say this completely without context. Man, that username takes me back. Okay, we can't we can't just gloss over that. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, let's, well, okay. let's, let's go back. Let's go back. I, I was playing uh I was playing Mario Kart with uh with my viewers. This is a long time ago. And uh, one of them was was talking about how like um, somebody somebody that that we knew had an end, uh, endoscopy, but they didn't know what an endoscopy was. So they called it a throat colonoscopy. <laughs> oh, I God. mean, that's that. I mean, that's basically what it is. The endoscopy, the um, the cystoscopy, and the colonoscopy is the holy trinity of holes. <laughs> Did you know? Actually, have have you ever have you heard of a sigmoidoscopy? A what? A sigmoidoscopy? No. Does, it's does, like, that, does that have to do with magicians? No. Actually, I like you. Why don't you guys to guess what a sigmoidoscopy is? If you don't know, sigmoid. Yeah. Through the ear. <laughs> Nostril. Uh, no. 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 Under the fingernail. No. Do you have any any further guess, Stephen? I, I don't. I'm googling sigmoid colonoscopy. <laughs> so it's it's less exciting than you might think think it is to be. So it's actually a hole that we've spoken about before. It's the same hole as a colonoscopy, um, but it's just like it's like the demo version of a colonoscopy. The demo that, version. Like it's like the it's like the demo oh. version. Oh. <clears throat> it's like okay. the trial. Yeah, it's like the trial version. Um, so like, the sigmoid is kind of like just opening the automatic door at the Walmart and looking inside. Okay. <laughs> the, oh, wow. The first that, 20 colonoscopy. That, <laughs> that, 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 that produced a visual. Get that card out. It, it, uh, so essentially, it, it's it's one of those, one of those, uh, those uh, blaster doors from Metroid and you just don't walk into it. Yeah, it's like, you, it's like, yeah, it's like, I mean, it's all of those things. It's like you peek in and then you, you peek in and then you're like, I've seen enough, and then and then you um you know you don't have to then yeah. then you then you leave. Um, well, listen, so the, 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 like I'm I'm very shy when it comes to that, so we're gonna need the super missiles for that one. Oh my god, the have the, the best had... part about it. Oh, go ahead, Steven. So I was gonna, sorry, I was gonna say, have y'all had colonoscopies? <laughs> no, no. Okay, I've had a couple. Um, a couple. I've had a couple Ooh. colonoscopies. And also the sigmoidoscopy. And I want to tell you, the, the, the craziest thing about the sigmoidoscopy is that you don't have to be under anesthesia during it. Oh, I like be, that less. You can, you can be conscious, and I was conscious. Well, actually, that might be okay. It, it depends, <laughs> like, like uh, this is... Wow, this is I don't man, have is... to go into a lot of detail here, but I'm <laughs> thinking about it, and I'm like, that'd probably be okay. Wow, this 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 podcast is just the dumping ground for everything that I didn't think we could talk about on Twitch. But yeah, is, oh, yeah. that's this is what this podcast is. We'll talk about whatever. It does not have so, to make sense. Oh, yeah. that's the best Carlos, part I've only I like I've I like that there, there's uh, been so many misconceptions about our podcast. Like when when we did it at TRG Coliseum <laughs> and Gerard thought it was like some weird mystery show. I mean, there's there also I don't even know what this podcast is. When people ask me what it is, I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it is four I for, I forget it after every talking show. about whatever. We cover everything from restaurant stabbings to colonoscopy. So, so Carlos, are they not the same thing? <laughs> you, Depends on where you get. I stabbed. would be very concerned what restaurant you're going to at that point. <laughs> so you, you've had you've had several colonoscopies. Yeah. Okay. I've I've only had the one. I've had mm. I've had, but I have I've had all, I've collected the whole set. I have all the oscopies, but I've only ever done them all. <laughs> oh, once. okay. <laughs> Um, Got all the opolis, the oscopies. You have, you, you have, wow! You're, you're, you're on top like, of, it, uh, top you of your do, finished week collection. You, you got all the oscopies. <laughs> if you ever have the sigmoidoscopy, then you get the omnioscopy um, mm. achievement, 
and uh, it's 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 hard to get. You have to pay so a lot of money to the American medical system. Tombstone system. when you die or what? <laughs> no, you just get like twenty gamer score. Ah, okay. The one mm. thing that I really did want to do is, um, d depending on your specific needs, when you're at the gastroenterologist, you can get the camera pill that you swallow, and it takes like fifty thousand photos, and then you poop it out. And mm. I really wanted that. And I asked the doctor when I was going through all these tests, I was like, am I going to get one of those? And he's like, it doesn't really help what you like need. Mm -hmm. He's like, we could order you one, but you have to pay for it. And I was like, mm, I don't want to do that. Steven, your obsession with cameras is very concerning at times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, again, th that's like a, that's a first time experience, John. Like the idea that you would be able to <laughs> swallow a camera and there get, is an <laughs> in photos of yourself. That's just a fun, neat activity. There, there is an unknown mass in your colon. That's a camera. I swallowed it to gain its power. <laughs> <laughs> and the one piece was inside of him the whole time. There you go. <laughs> so Carlos, you're yeah. you're a musician with a, with a I lot have of been, talents. I uh, have been known. Of, a lot of musical wisdom that you can share with everyone. Uh, it's a, Honestly, it's a real treat to have access to some of that raw creativity here on the show. So I wanted to ask, <laughs> do you use chip clips? <laughs> do you, so do you mean like in a in a general sense or a musical sense? No, I mean like, like for your chips. No, I think the musical sense is way funnier, but he does mean food. You can you could probably use this as a uh, as like a percussion instrument. You can everything is a percussion instrument. Like like when you you know everything is either a kick snare or a hi hat, right? When you my head is a down. percussion instrument. Take a listen. Oh wow, that's actually that's very impressive. Actually, I'd like audible. to understand your your oral cavity resonance is very good. I am um, I'm definitely in awe of that. <laughs> <laughs> but about for chip clips in general, um, well, um, no, I don't. Though I, are you, though I, are you a bag folder? Um, so or are you I'm an like the entire bag in one go guy? No, no, I'm definitely not. A, I'm definitely not like a you know a a, a whole bag consumer all at once. Um, yeah, I do none like of I us do. Are. <laughs> <laughs> do I like? Oh, do hmm. you all like spicy food? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but spicy food does not like me. Do you enjoy? Yeah, I'm, do you enjoy? I'm cheese? also like that cheese flavored snacks i am lactose intolerant so no i mean yeah well, john do i have something that is definitely not for you, <laughs> you good cheese. all right left out of this episode no i just uh, they make flaming hot smart food popcorn and it's like my favorite snack right now it's uh, <laughs> a great snack if you like those things <clears throat> tom yeah do do you do you use chip clips or do you fold i Here's the thing. I fold, but every time I do, I wish I had a chip clip. Do you own chip clips? I do not. Hmm. Well, I know what you're getting for Christmas. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, thanks, Grandpa. Socks and chip clips. Wow. We <laughs> that, is, that is the most Grandpa gift ever, I feel. <laughs> Son, I feel like you've been you've been taking too long eating these chips, and they've been getting stale. So I've got just the thing you need. I've got this bag, clip, <laughs> and I got them in I, different colors because I know you like that rainbow. Be cute. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm gonna open my mail one day, and there's gonna be there's gonna be uh, chip clips and a coupon for a free colonoscopy. <laughs> you you want to know what my my fear of folding is? My 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 fear of folding is that so he's is gonna that... unfold it and get inside. It, my fear of folding is that I will somehow lose track of where the the opening is, and when I go what? to grab the bag, I will I will inadvertently flip it upside down and spill. Grab it from the, the side, you monster! What? You don't know when you well how you how open you... it from the top, right? Now hold on, hold on, hold on. How are you folding it where it's where this is happening? How are you opening the bag? It doesn't matter if you if you've no if it you've does matter the, it it if you cut open the top of the bag and you and you roll it and you have multiple snacks you got like a pile of plastic and you're trying to reach in and grab something you have to make sure when that you grab it correctly 
but when you put it back in the cabinet, are you not putting it where the contents are, are, are like on the bottom of it, not the folded part? I mean, you're certainly, you're trying. You're doing what do you mean you're best. trying? It could fall. It could fall over. There's other things in the pantry. You generally don't have just one thing in the pantry. You might but have every multiple time open I things. put something in there and it's like that. Like uh, my first instinct is to, like lean it up against something so it doesn't fall. What if you have something leaned up against the thing that you have something leaned up against? Then organize your pantry. <laughs> yeah. See what? Well, you know what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that this is this is a lot, and a chip clip just solves all of it. I, I think you just I, uh, have an I issue agree with, with the... small movements. I I, 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 feel like uh, <laughs> I agree with the use of chip clips, but I do not agree with like the with the philosophy. Hmm. I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm hearing Mal sorts well, things I just saw in chat. I'm not. Yeah, that was my actual thought. Also, welcome to disco only, Carlos. <laughs> These are normal conversations. I'm just laughing at the idea of Steven like, I really dislike fine motor movements. Like, that's just not me <laughs> at all. Like, I can't do that. It's, I'm just saying there are things in life that are literally created by an engineer, an inventor somewhere to make your life easier. And near the top of the list of these inventions was the chip clip. Okay, so so the the fundamental so, problem right. that I have with the chip clip, the the problem is that when you fold the bag of the chips, you need no extra utilities. You have the bag there because you're presumably already eating the bag of chips, right? And it's an extra step to grab the bag to grab the the, the chip clip, even if it's right next to you because you're eating the chips out of the bag, right? So science needs to solve the problem of how do I get a chip clip? How does the bag turn into a chip clip? Oh, we. I mean, like there, that. there, there are bags like that. Like they, they, they make bags that are like the Ziploc kind, but like not for like chip right, bags. Okay, that, that's but, the, but then that's the true. issue, the, the, but then the issue becomes waste. Like the more you add onto a bag, the more waste you're going to produce. What you, what you do? What honestly, Carlos, the only problem that you're really having is the first time. It's the opening, the ceremonial opening of the chips is where you don't have the chip clip with you. You really right. need a chip clip with you at the beginning. So what I would advise is that as soon as you get home from the store with the unopened bag of chips, place the chip clip on the closed bag and put what? it in the pantry. So next Ooh. time, it's how, already there. How whoa, organized whoa, as a whoa. person are you? What? Well, the answer is obvious. You have to wear the chip clip as an earring 24-7. That way, you that's, don't wait. That's lose an, that's an the idea. Clip, you can just get like one of those ones that's like magnetic. Just stick it on the side of your fridge, and then like when you need it, you grab it. There you go. That's it. Problem solved. If I'm ever a cashier at a grocery store, I would like to give out complimentary chip clips to all my patrons as they check out and say, "Oh, you're gonna need this, by the way. Here, take this," and put a chip clip delicately on the top of their chip bag because it will enrich their life. Very much, as I have learned in this conversation. Steven, have you ever used a twist tie? <laughs> a twist tie. That's funny. My issue with uh, my my issue with folding <laughs> my my issue with folding the bag as well is that like sometimes the material it's made out of won't take the fold well, and it'll just unfold and this the stuff inside yeah. will get start getting stale. The fold true. will fold. It's true. I'm just saying there's a lot of advantages to chip clips. To be honest, there might be other non-food things that you can do with them. Oh my god. You know, I I hmm. Hmm. Uh, you can I make the like you to... can do the predator teeth thing. You can do that. I would like to reach out personally to Evans Manufacturing. Uh we would like uh we would like to be sponsored by Keep It Clips. I just think it would be nice to have a sponsor for the show that was something very odd. Is, is this all this is? Just a plan to get a sponsor? Is that why we're talking about chip clips so much? We're trying yeah, to get on the, the, not, the sorry, SEO did you not get for my chip DM? <laughs> the DM that I sent earlier today was like, we're going to have a long conversation about chip clips. That's the plan. And talk about how necessary they are so we can get the sponsorship deal. Did you get my <sighs> message? Or... You, you might have not CC'd me on that. He did send oh it via God. carrier pigeon. That would be why it's very hard to CC when you use a carrier pigeon. <laughs> did you attach uh, well, the well, message he, to the well, pigeon here's, with the chip here's, clip? Well, here's the thing. He did CC it, but the but like after it took off to the sky, the bird split into three pieces and just fell out of the sky. Ah, uh, okay. I hate that.
Does we need more CC... reliable birds. Wait, does CC stand for chip clip? No. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> but I, I'm not going down that. Did so you B chip BC clip me into that big, message? Is big chip clip. The big chip clip. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Pekka. Oh no. Oh my god. You know, some um chip clips would actually be useful. Like as a saxophonist, there's something I um the bait of my existence are reeds. <laughs> I'm if sorry. You... I have to point this out. There oh is my god. there is a fan art created by Sapphire Becca on screen right now that is a that is Steven doing a play by play of a bidet with all the John Madden arrows, X's and O's that you could ever want. Oh my god. So you see the <laughs> football's a sport. Go poopers. <laughs> Go poopers. Go poopers. Carlos, tell me about reeds. Yeah. So with reeds, they are the they are if you don't know how a saxophone works, is it's basically a, a tube of metal and you have a mouthpiece, but you attach a reed, which is a little piece of wood that's like shaped and shaved in a very specific way. You attach that to the saxophone, and then you blow air, and the reed is what makes the noise. Now, the problem is that reeds are so finicky because they're made of wood, and they're small, so sometimes they warp, or humidity changes will mess them up. So one of the things that you do when you break in a, a reed is that you waterlog it, and that involves like doing this process of the reed and sticking it in a glass of water. But I've been using like paper clips and clothes pins before, but I'm, I have this vision of a bulk read like a bulk read breaking in machine where i can put like oh hi sab sab also knows uh, understands the the the, the bullshit, pain of reads the, pain, yes. the bullshit and pain of reads yep but i'm imagining like a, like a, one of those wide chip clips and like like a big like a nice big container of water and like 10 reeds soaking at the same time with a chip clip that is that is the future that i wish to engage in yeah that go. would that and would I actually think a chip work clip that's an actual would work very well mm-hmm Reed suck. Don't don't play the saxophone. I wouldn't recommend it. How many do you have prepped at one time? Because like when I was playing saxophone, I was only having I only had like two. At, oh, so let time. me let me tell you, as a person who owns not just one saxophone but four saxophones and also two clarinets, all of which use reeds, I actually just did a um a reed storage overhaul, which is like the nerdiest thing I think I've ever said. Um, but I uh, I have like these cases that keep them in a certain humidity, and usually for each instrument, for each saxophone, I try and have like three that are decent at a time. So you multiply that; that's like eighteen reeds that are like that are accessible at a time that I can just pull out um, because it makes a huge difference. Like it can make the difference between sounding like a like like um like you're you can sound uh -huh. soggy. Yeah, like having a having a firm you know like a firm um, girthy tone as opposed to like a floppy and kind of like dull tone um so okay so so, so the, the the difference is between her and her it's well i mean it's like, it's more like it's like her and her um man this is great i need more like that. examples or like <laughs> or um and that's like that's a that's a that's a floppy tone you can tell it doesn't have enough like the pitch isn't quite there like okay, well like now no. let us hear the girth that's a good no. one um or perhaps <clears throat> that's a really good one you can tell there's a little bit of edge in that one and sometimes when you play jazz like you want uh there are actually specific reeds that give you that little ness to it um, and they're cut in a very specific way. So there's filed and unfiled reeds. The filed reeds are like classical, so they might sound like hmm, you know, a nice warm resonant hmm. But the jazz ones are like hmm. um, and sometimes even like um, Carlos, that's more extreme kind. But Carlos, yeah. this is why you got so many colonoscopies so you could sound so much like you're pooping when you make sex. Oh, this, this, oh, this, yeah. is, listen, this was before my colonoscopy arc. Like, okay, I've had this the arc for a long time. <laughs> Well, this is probably yeah. the reason why he needed the colonoscopy. I do hate that you had a colonoscopy arc, <laughs> but also if you have several, then yeah, I, I guess that's an arc. I love it, was, Mal's, it was an arc. Mal's comment in chat. It's too bad Carlos doesn't have any saxophones nearby that he could play. But the vocal examples are so much better. Also, <laughs> I, I want to go over the greatest tragedy uh, ever to, to hit Star Wars, and it is music related. Oh, uh, no, I forgot about this. <laughs> They retconned. Oh. They retconned what the what the music they play at the canteen is called. 
It's called Jats music now when it was called Jizz music. Oh, what? They changed it? They yeah. changed the history of the You're genre? You're surprised that Disney would try to change this? Or is this a Lucas I mean, change? I'm not, I'm not so... I'm Probably not so, a Disney change, honestly. This is not surprising, but this is, like, sad. It will always wow. be Jizz music. I'm, I'm going gonna to go, go on Twitter I, I am, and search am, up Jizz, because I know that is a dangerous thing to look going, for, but uh, I'm trying yeah. to find... There's I, a specific post that was going around with a quote about it. I am well, going to go... all of the search results will be about Star Wars music, I would assume. I am going to go to Galaxy's Edge, and if they've got, like, a live canteen music playing, I'm just going to shout to the crowd, Yeah, play that jizz! I'm sure you would not be the first, honestly. <laughs> so, wait, wait, wait. So if you're, in, like, in you're in the cantina in Star Wars, and you look at someone, and you shake your hands, you know, in a very rapid way with your palms facing toward them, what do you call that? Jizz hands. Oh. Oh. I hate this. Man, I really hate. I hate. I hate that. I really hate that. (laughs) (laughs) Can we go back to talking about chip clips? Well, they also have like those, uh, those, uh, those, those cups that have like that weird design up there. Those jizz cups. What? Yeah, you know that pattern, the 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 jizz pattern. (sighs) Oh no, no, no. Okay, someone put a chip clip on this guy's lips. We're. uh... (laughs) <laughs> We're done with this. All right. I think it's time for the 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 classic disc only question that we ask all of our guests. Oh God. Oh. And that is Carlos. Yeah. You 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 get to make one sandwich. Oh yeah. You can have any sandwich, any mm. topping. Have we ever asked what, this question to people before? I think we asked this what last month. What is okay? What is the 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 sandwich that you you create? So in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Good you start. make sandwich. You make sandwiches. Yeah, the pickle sandwich with butter. That's a that's a um that's a local delicacy. Yes, I think that's the local delicacy of Lavincia. Iono's been known to have that kind of sandwich. Um, but if I was making a sandwich, I would probably just like, um, I think I would do what I do in that game, which is uh maybe like stack like. So get like five hard boiled eggs and obviously peeled. I'm not going to put a non peeled hard boiled egg in my sandwich. You don't want the extra but fiber? It, um, is that would that is that fiber or just I, like uh, texture? I guess let's just say it's extra crunch. Texture. It's I mean it's it's crunch, but there's like there's crunch that like I trust will get digested. Like you know like those crunchy onions. Calcium. That you use Chad as a it's calcium. That's calcium. Really interesting. I. Hmm. That's that's interesting. Um. So what I would do is I would take the five hard boiled eggs. I would cut all of them in half, and then I would stack them vertically. Like we, we, you need like a you know like a like a hoagie roll, right? Like a proper hoagie roll. Cut the hoagie roll in half. Like put the put it flat on the table, and then proceed to stack ten, um, about ten halved hard boiled eggs on top of each other, and then you balance the bread on top of that, and. I think, I mean, it works in Pokemon, and it's really good for increasing, I actually don't know what that specific sandwich configuration does in the game, but it does something. And I I mean, I think that would just be the best sandwich. That's, I usually do like an Italian. Oh, this is the egg. This is the very egg sandwich. Yep. The egg is just a pile of egg. A pile of, a pile of egg. All egg all the time. You know how you usually use like a toothpick in like a burger or like a like a sandwich or like to, to keep like if it's, everything if it's together? Like a, if it's like a tall sandwich, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yesterday, I actually I just made I made yakitori at home with like with skewers, and I bought like a bunch of bamboo skewers. And then I was looking at these skewers, and I realized, wait, what are these? But just like extra extra long toothpicks, you know. Now, I don't think you should use them as toothpicks. But what you could do is like take one of those skewers like vertically through all the eggs and then your sandwich is secure it's a big bite but you could still you know you could still manage it i think my food might be here is your <laughs> is 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 your uh is your driver or delivery person a dog oh no i think uh, i think uh, i i do believe the security has as uh i think the dog uh, is it, eating the food is, is what's happening yeah exactly uh, i think my tom jalapeno ordered, cheeseburger no i think i think tom ordered uh the egg sandwich. The egg sandwich. I mean, he already knew. He knew in advance. I, I wonder what. How do they pack? An, how do they pack an egg? Maybe the egg tower. Egg tower sandwich. That actually sounds pretty good. Or like the. Um, I mean, mm. you could just slice the egg. Just have egg slices. I mean, like there is something here. Like, 
I don't normally put hard-boiled <laughs> eggs on a sandwich, but that doesn't mean you can't. And you can. I mean, like my my breakfast pretty much every day is like a variation of it's a variation of eggs and toast, right? Usually it's like scrambled scrambled eggs with toast. Sometimes like you can do like a like like sunny side up, but you know what? Like an egg sandwich like that is just I mean it's the same thing, right? It's still bread, right? You could toast the bread in the sandwich if you want, um, but it still has eggs, so it's like in a way it's like a breakfast sandwich, right? Because it's a it's an egg tower sandwich. It's like you're eating that every day, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like I've been eating it, like, my entire life. Like, it's like I look at it and it says, it's like I look at that sandwich and it speaks to me and says, I'm home. This is my, this is, this is what you've been eating. You've been eating me your whole life. I'm no different. I also enjoy having eggs for, for breakfast. I, I, I feel you're like you I, enjoy having food talk to you, because I think that's what was just happening to Carl. I mean, I, I do, I, I enjoy that as well, but that happens far less frequently than having eggs in, in the morning. Um, mm. and I feel like I don't make eggs for breakfast unless Mal also wants eggs. Like if I'm cooking for two, I'm like, all right. But the minute that it's just me, I'm like, I'll just eat cereal. You also try to get a fried egg on your, um, on your burgers, right? Oh, absolutely. That's if good. I'm gonna, That's if good I'm going to have a burger somewhere, I will always ask if they will put a fried egg on it. And they usually do. A lot of places will. Yeah, that's pretty common. Have you? What's the? Um, have you ever had a? Uh, How are the uh, cholesterol a, levels? Oh my god, man! I I'm on a pill, <laughs> so I'm I'm invincible. I think I'm pretty sure when the doctor prescribed it, he was like, "Go crazy." Oh. So I I uh, I don't think about it at all. Have you hey, ever had a, um, oh yeah, no, I was thinking of the, the weirdest burger that, have you ever had like a, have you had peanut butter burger? Have you oh, had yes. peanut butter on a burger? I have. Okay. Have you had a peanut butter banana burger? No. I had that once. I had that once at an affirm at a, at a burger company that will not be named. And like, it, like the idea, like the, of a peanut butter banana burger, like sounded good, but it was not, it was not very good. I, d I don't. I'm not a big. Was this burger person. shop in Vegas? No. Like, this sounds like an Elvis burger. Oh, really? Is that, is that is that is it known as that? Well, okay. So what what was it? Elvis was famous for eating. It was like wasn't it like fried peanut butter and fried jelly peanut sandwiches? butter bananas? Fried yeah. peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah. That and then also eating like a twelve foot giant sandwich of just peanut butter and jelly. And maybe something else on that? Uh, peanut know. butter, but banana, and like bacon ten sandwich. Of them. Yeah, Elvis Burgers, We're peanut, in... bacon, banana. <clears throat> yeah, I had um, I had peanut butter on a burger. It was like a peanut butter bacon burger uh, at some point when I was in Indiana. And it was good. Like, it, it actually, you know, it worked. It was... A novelty. It's not something I would want every time I get a burger, but it, there wasn't any part of it that was bad. Actually, there's a new burger if you have a Culver's nearby. They're, they're doing burgers for a limited time where you get a f like a full patty-sized cheese curd, like a fried cheese oh, curd. Oh, God. Mm. Instead of the cheese, which is still cheese, so it's... <laughs> just more cheese they call that anyway. the blocker yeah i um i had one recently and it was uh it was good it was a lot of cheese as uh you probably could have guessed did you yeah it's called it's called the were, Curter were you regular afterwards <laughs> yeah so actually uh, i was probably more regular because <laughs> i you know I, I'm on the one end of the spectrum. What? So I'd put... <laughs> he he's on Man, the cheese spectrum. The there's... Poop spectrum. I can't tell where we're going with this. <laughs> Tom, there's 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 Bristol one through seven, right? There's Bristol one through seven, where one is uh, passing a a wood plank, and uh, seven is passing a bucket of water. Uh, three or a four is normal. I, I I live in the, the six to seven zone. So uh, when you live there, you don't really get constipated. That's not really a thing 
that happens. Does that make sense? Mm. I've never heard of it called a spectrum, but I get what you're talking about. Yeah, it's well, it's the it's the it's the, it's the Bristol only, scale. The, the only reason the only reason I looked in in I've I know what you're talking about is because I had to look into that to make sure my dog's poop was consistent. Right. Yeah. I, that's my first experience to that too, was reading it like the, on the wall at the vet was like, Oh my poop, the poop hardness scale. Oh, okay. I'm glad there's, I'm glad there's a standard for this. This is important. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if so I have, I live with IBS. I've had IBF, I, IBS basically forever. Um, Irritable and bowel you, syndrome. And when, and when you have that, like you, you know, the scale, <laughs> You're very familiar with the scale because when things change for you, you're like, oh, something has changed. <laughs> I've also been tracking things for the past like two or three months, uh, like all of my food, as well as all of my fun bathroom times, just to try and figure out something. I, I, so it's, it's might, very I, prevalent I, in my mind. I think I might be, be constipated, metaphor on the Bristol scale. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I, it's that's yeah that's a that's a kind of a thing that I feel sometimes. <laughs> so John, how's your evening going? I have no I idea so how to add to that anybody. conversation at all. I'm like for anybody who's eating right now, listening to this. I am so uh, sorry. Well, John, how are your bowel movements? Yeah, tell us about your your, um, um, your why your does it bowel keep come, why do people keep asking me this fucking question? Dan did this, and now you guys are. I mean, most you, you know, you're aiming for three. You aim for three. Four is okay. I'm very concerned like something that else this is how multiple times the rally collective have asked me how do I poop. <laughs> Dan says I ran out of things to talk about, John. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you the, <laughs> if you want me if you if you want me to change the topic, I can. But like, it's me, John. So like, you don't know where we're gonna wind up. The, <laughs> I I can change the topic to something else if you want. You ever I, eaten a beat before? Oh, that's a great topic. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It's um, it's weird. It's like a. It's like a. It's got the flavor of a carrot, but like a, but it's, uh, it's hard, like a turnip. Wait, wait, wait! Oh no, I was, I was like, wait, I've had a beat, and then you said the word turnip, and I was like, nah, it was a turnip. <laughs> I had to remember that turnip was a thing. How did you have your, uh, how did you prepare your beat, or how was your beat prepared? Um, I scrubbed it, and then I ate it. So raw. Wait, you raw? Yeah. Is raw that dog normal? that beat, baby. I knew yeah. someone was gonna say it. I knew it. Is raw beat? Is is that normal? You can no. do it. I. That's that seems. Mm. Don't like, I've let I, anyone. I've, eat, I've eaten four <laughs> raw vegetables in my stream ever since I did the beat the the turnip king thing in Animal Crossing. Starting with a turnip, then I ate a raw like a raw turnip, then a raw eggplant, then a raw head of cabbage, and then three raw beets. Don't I mean, let any uh, anyone tell you you can't eat something how you. So you're eat not it. a four on the scales. What you're saying, you're definitely past that. He's got so much fiber in there. That's like, so much fiber. fiber. His been, fibers, it, your fiber stores are off the charts. Oh, yeah. The problem with the beat is that I had to remember that I ate the beat. Otherwise, I would have think that there was something wrong with me. <laughs> what? You forgot? No, if I if I did forget, I'd think there's something wrong because it turned my urine pink. Ah. Uh, mm. And it turned my, and turned my poo red. Mm. Pink piss. Mm. Ah, uh, finally. Yeah. You know, finally okay, here's a, here's a topic. Here's an interesting topic change. What do you guys think about the asparagus smell? Oh, man. Not, not, the, smell of of, not the smell of eating asparagus, but like the after smell. Oh, yeah, asparagus. yeah. The asparagus. We are pee. still yeah. on pee. Yeah. No, we, we, was, yeah, not really a topic change in the grand no, scheme no, of things. No, 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 no. We went from poo-poo to pee-pee. Big difference. There was there was a period in my life where where we were preparing asparagus a lot I, I think it's because i grew up not really eating a lot of asparagus and then at some point mal and i had bought some and we're like my god asparagus is good so we just asparagus were making really it all good. the time it's very good there's so many good ways to prepare it as well but yeah it uh it smells horrid i think uh, it's after smell yeah mm -hmm. roasting it with some oil salt and pepper is a great way to eat asparagus 
I tend another, to only really have it when it's paired thing. with like steak or like meat. Am I like what do you usually eat it with? It's I usually mean, paired you... with like a, with like a like a beef or chicken dish. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we we don't normally have a lot of steak, but like if I'm at a restaurant and I am I'm ordering a steak, I almost always get asparagus with it yeah. if that's an option. Oh, or um, or bacon wrapped asparagus. That's really good. Oh, oh yeah. that's the good mm. stuff. Yeah, that's that's an excellent vehicle. That's like, the least it, healthy, it's... but the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the the other the other vegetable that I discovered in adulthood that I really really enjoyed was uh, Brussels sprouts. I love mm. Brussels sprouts, and I never mm. had those when I was when I was very young. strong smelling though when you're preparing them. I mean, you've heard the story about those, right? Where they kind of just change the strain of. Brussels sprouts yeah. that was growing, so they made it so it's more it didn't taste as bad. Everyone hated Brussels sprouts, so the Brussels sprout industry was like, "Oh, what if we just like altered them?" <laughs> and then they did, and now everyone likes them. Okay, so is this? I I heard from somebody that um that like Brussels sprouts were like. Well, first off, this this person told me that broccoli is like that. We broccoli was man made. Is this true? Like. Was I don't know. Is broccoli naturally occurring, or is it a man-made vegetable? Is that is, is that friend, even a thing? Is your friend a conspiracy theorist? No, no, no. I'm just I'm not sure they know the I'm not sure they know the full story. But like, is it, it, it did, like is there like a like was was broccoli like at the Big Bang? Was broccoli there? You know, or no? Almost <laughs> almost nothing. Like we 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 like bred the in crap the beginning. Out of everything. There was only broccoli. <laughs> Yeah, like we we made everything. It's like the B plot of a Kids Next Door episode. Broccoli like, resulted we made... from breeding of uh, land race uh, brassica crops in the northwest Mediterranean, starting in, in about the sixth century BC. We made we made vegetables. We made like four hundred types of apples. We made stupid oh, yeah. looking dogs. Like we did everything. How dare you? Whoa, Manatee, whoa. don't listen to this podcast. Whoa, you know we did. Also, that Tom, that that's a lot for you to assume that stupid-looking dog applies to your dog. Goodness, well, Uno reverse card. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, we did. You know, we developed we developed some dogs that like sit there and can't breathe, and we're like, yeah. eh. hey, listen, I'm just warning him because he's got he's got self-esteem issues. Okay, you're not a silly-looking dog. Poor little guy. Uh, he's got such a squishy face. He's here under my desk. Tom, is Manatee uh, is Manatee your first dog? Have you had dogs before? Uh, it's my first dog that I've owned by myself. I've had family oh, okay. dogs before. Have you really? uh, have you have you had a Sharpay before? Yep, I wanted to get a Sharpay when I was uh when I uh, moved out because I wanted something familiar. Aww. Aww. Manatee looks friend. Manatee looks so looks so happy whenever I get to see him. Yeah. Whenever I see him in the pictures that you share. When I um, whenever I take him out for uh, I've, I've been teaching him how to uh, how to walk with me off off uh, off leash, and he's been doing a really good job of it. How how old is he now? He turns three in January. Oh, okay, yeah. Looker just turned three in uh, September, so they're they're at the same age. Yeah. They're close. He um, I'm trying to think when I, it's funny when I when I take him out for walks off the leash because like he he sort of like either plods behind me or he keeps up with me, but every time we, we hit like a, a crosswalk or whatever. I tell him wait, and he'll just like stand there and look at me. Oh, I'll make sure there, and I'll make sure there isn't a car coming, and I'll say, "Okay, let's go," and I'll start walking. He'll still sit there. <laughs> <laughs> Almost had it. Almost. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. You didn't teach me to unwait. Oh, he got two thirds of it down. Yep. He's if, uh, well. At the very least, if nothing else, he's not running into the street. So I'll take I'll take him just sitting there, not moving I mean, maybe... over him running into the road. Maybe he likes to sit, you know, which I understand. Yeah. He likes to, uh, his favorite thing when we're out on a walk or at the park is smells. He just wants to smell everything. Of course. And, and then, like, when he's done smelling everything, he just comes back and, like, guards me as though every other dog in the park is, like, is a potential problem. Does Does he ever dig holes? He, no. He What he'll do... And he's done this fairly recently. I've got a video of it. Is that like if he sees a frog outside, he'll like paw at the grass around the frog, which in some cases tears it up a little bit. So he kind of digs a little bit there, but he just wants the frog to hop. 
He just mm. wants the frog to hop mm. so he can like like go up to it and like smell it and then like be like, well, you're not hopping. And then it'll hop and it'll be like, it's hopping! And then it'll go up and smell <laughs> it again. <laughs> he loves frogs. He just does the frog let it, like does does the frog allow itself to like does it does the frog allow manatee to get close enough for like him to actually smell it like yeah that close? Like, uh, well I mean like I think it's like a response of him like if I don't move then uh then I won't get like eaten by this predator but he doesn't want to eat the frog he just wants to like he's curious of the frog aren't we all curious of the frog of the frog yes you yeah, know he loves frogs um he likes chasing after small flying bugs if you can see them oh yeah. He yeah, loses them very. Like, he yeah. he is not a very sharp-eyed dog though, because he he loses them very easily. Yeah, small bugs like that. They're just like naturally occurring toys to dogs. I feel like they see them it's flying great. around, and they're just like, I have, I, 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 I'm sorry, but I have to chase it right now. Like, I, there's, there's no, there's nothing there's, else I can do. If there's a moth like flying low to the ground, it'll be like, oh, manatee, look, it's a bug, and then it'll be, it'll like start chasing after it, and you know, it, 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 the way he wins is that he eats the bug. That's a dog. Yeah. You know, I just realized we have we have two dog havers and we have two cat havers. Yep. In this podcast. And then and Jared oh, had he, both. <laughs> Jared's got both. Oh, yep. really? This is um I, uh, yes, Jared. Jared has a lot of pets, doesn't he? He's got I think does he, does he just have, I thought he just had blue and um I, Arvin, does he still I think the dog's name is. I thought I don't know if he still has ramen, which was the snake. I don't I I don't know the I think he does still have ramen, ramen yeah. I thought he still had the snake, yeah, so the three. Yeah. Wow, so it's perfect. So it's between, I guess, between all of us, if we include all of us, it's all balanced, I guess. But there's, I guess, Team Snake is the one that wins because dog and dog and cat are balanced out. There you go. Do they win by being outnumbered? I don't think that's how it works with snakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did, did Ramen... Okay, I wasn't sure. Did Ramen pass, did, did Ramen pass away? Okay. That's, well, I, I didn't know I, Ramen. I, really? A couple of years ago? I feel like he was talking about him recently as though he was still alive. Oh, okay. I seem to remember. I, I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't sure. So, well, may Ramen rest in peace. Slither through the clouds. Mm. Jared mm. also has a drum set. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my pet drum set. Wait, I, this art. Wait, the, the art of wait me looking at this toast with the eggs. I don't have that much chin hair. Like I, I love this art, but I'm confused. Like that's as the part to... you're critiquing. Like I don't have that much facial hair. Not the fact that your toast is talking to you. Well, no, this... no, this is like this is normal. Like like the talking toast is actually like, pretty cool. Um... Is... Carlos, this is a premonition. You will be growing uh, oh, more no. of your beard hair out. Oh, yeah, God, you're gonna have you're, you're gonna premonitions. Have a... Don't talk. You're gonna you're gonna have a tom. You're gonna have a tom beard. Yeah. I, I think, think I think that's I the think 2024 look. Ugh. I, I hope it's not. I, I, I hope it's not. I don't, like, no. I, I don't want... <laughs> you don't know until you try. Eat your hamburgers, Apollo. Man, I, I went to the... the What do you call it when they cut your hair? The place that cuts your hair. The DMV. The, there you DMV. go, yes. The DMV. The DMV. I went to the DMV, <laughs> and uh, I, I got to the DMV, and they were like, what do you want? And I was like, do whatever you want. I was like, you can do whatever you want. However... Just know that I'm not going to do anything to it. Like, I'm going to get out of bed, and that's it. Like, I don't comb my hair. I don't put anything in my hair. I refuse that, to do it. So, that like, still blows my mind, dude, that you don't comb your brush your hair. Absolutely not. Um, I brush my hair so much. Nope. It takes Never. a lot of work for these... It takes a lot of work for these luscious locks. You know, Steven, you could just use a chip clip in your hair if you really wanted to. Oh, right? no, don't give him the idea. <laughs> don't do it. Some... Sometimes, sometimes a chip clip winds up in my hair if Mallory has a chip clip and I'm walking by. It just happens. Anyway, they cut my hair and they did a great Mal job. Like, oh, great. <laughs> they call that the uh, they call that the chip crab. <laughs> That's it. She's a, you, you got you got a chip clip in each hand and like someone walks by, you pinch them with it, and you leave the chip clip in there. You, you, you just got chip chip crabbed. It's, that's the that's the new newest form of crabby in the newest Pokemon game. Is the, there you uh, go? Is the, 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 yeah, the he's, ever, he's, divergent he's, evolution. I would I, no, I would love that if it, like that was that like the uh, paradox Pokemon King learn is just it's got, got two chip clips for its hands. Yeah, the, the oh. future iron 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 pin, iron chip <laughs> iron chips. <laughs> Oh my god! I like 
there's one thing that that bugs me about the future paradox Pokemon that they literally can't do anything about, and uh, it's that they're all robots. And when you think of the future, the two things that come to mind are like are technology and evolution. And Pokemon already does evolution. Yeah. So like, so they could really only do robot, but I wish they were able to do more. Hmm. Yeah. I. I feel okay. In case anyone doesn't know, there's like in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, there's um there's uh, Pokemon that come from come from the past, Pokemon that come from the future that are known as Paradox Pokemon. Um, all the past ones are sort of like they're, they're kind feral. Of like, they're they're very primal yeah, they're looking. feral, like dinosaurish, like um, scream tail as like a jiggly puff with fangs and really big hair. Yep. Um, but then uh, the future ones are all um, I guess they're all just they're futuristic. They're all robots, like Tom said. But the part that I don't like is that. Their names. Their names are just iron, are, yep. the iron, 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 whatever. iron noun. You know, like um, there's iron thorns, which is Tyranitar. Like it, it could be so cool because, like for like the past forms, you have like, um, what is it? Like, like sc- brute, scream tail, brute bonnet, scream tail, roaring moon. It's like whoa, that's cool. They have they have cool names, but no, they're just they're just all robots. Devil's advocate on on that one. Iron is probably the shortest metal name they could have come up with. However, I Steel. think they should have gone with different. Yeah, no, they could they could have easily done done steel for for a few of those or like like uh like or or not have gone so so frilly with the language. Like yeah. for example, as for example, Iron Jugulus could have been like Cobalt Neck. Cuz Iron Sorry. Jugulus would not fit. When, or Cobalt when Jugulus the, would not fit. When did the Pokémon become robots? So, in this generation, there's like a there's a time machine. And uh, mm-hmm. and like it like the 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 Pokemon are being like pulled from the past if it's Scarlet and the future if it's Violet. And the ones that are the ones that are pulled from the future are are essentially robots. What's one that What's one that Grandpa would know? Um, I mean, Grandpa would know Screamtail. Yeah, Grandpa would know it, that's, it, jiggly, that's Jigglypuff. Yeah. Jigglypuff. Um, what's another? Is there another? You play like, you played the second generation, right? I did actually. Uh, I do you remember Deli Bird? My carts today. <laughs> wow. Do you remember, do you remember Deli Bird? No. Santa Santa Bird with the little tail on his back. No. Oh, um, uh, sorry. What about uh, um, Tyranitar? No. Um, oh, what's a, what's a Gen One? Was there? A, oh, okay, okay. This is a wild one. Magneton. Do you remember Magneton? Yeah, Magneton. Okay, so there's you're, you're not ready for this. There's um there's a past version of Magneton called Sandy Shocks, which is ground electric, and basically like if they, think of Magneton if it came from the world of Mad Max. Sorry, I just want to like double check. This is not a fanfic. This no, is like, this, this is the most real. recent Pokemon game. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to put the link in guest chat for uh, for Sandy Shocks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, take a look at that. It, it's 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 mag. Like I said, it's Magneton. I've never seen mag- this design. What a design Mad Max. that is. Yeah, no, the, like a lot of the past Pokemon have really neat ones. Uh, what is me. who was it? Um. Uh, what the hell is the name of the Pokemon? Volcarona got a lot of love for the uh, the Paradox Pokemon. Yeah, because it got. I don't think. I don't same think with, same with Don Fan. Got, uh, Don Fan and Volcarona got got a lot of love with this. Yeah. There's so much, all the time. Yeah, like, that's, uh, that's Pokemon. When, when, yeah, yeah. So when much. you're the when when you're the biggest media franchise based on the creation constant creation of monsters, you kind of have to. You, there kind of has to be much. Mm. I so I I a, a friend had asked me for a favor. And uh, I had to try and capture some footage from a game, and it was a uh, Game Boy game. So I, I ever since we've been moving, because I feel like we just keep moving, all my Game Boy games have wound up in like several gallon-sized Ziploc bags. Like the other stuff's on the shelf, but the Game Boy games haven't been. So today I finally like dug through and found um, this thing I was looking for, and amongst it was all my other Game Boy games. So I had like my childhood copies of uh red and blue and yellow and gold and silver and uh. i haven't plugged them into a game boy to check to see if the batteries are still it's alive the batteries but are like, definitely dead the probably battery dead. for my copy of blue fell out Jesus. well the the <sighs> thing is though i i over the years i have often felt that the batteries in the original game boy games lasted much longer than like game boy color yeah mm. and i my don't po- my know gold if it's still battery. alive or not my Pokemon Gold battery died a long time ago, but I think yeah. my Pokemon either red or blue still works, and that's my child. Those are my childhood copies. Yeah, I uh, I had to. <laughs> so one of the things that I, with the the footage that I was getting for, uh, today, was someone needed footage of the demo cart of Minish Cap, and I own that for some odd reason. 
Um, Wild. And I, I had bought um, the Analog Pocket, like when it first launched, however long ago that was, almost a year ago. And I had not opened it because there has not been enough time in my life to deal with all of that. Mm. And I finally opened it today. And it's a really neat thing. Like, you put a game in it, and it plays it on your television, but it's, like, um, uh, big and pretty. Hmm. They're still oh. making them, but they sell out immediately because... Oh, yeah, uh, because they're very, very good and very sought after. Yeah, they're not they making enough the, of them. They keep doing, like, the weird, like, here's a like glow-in-the-dark model that we're announcing three days before we sell it, and we only made 30. The other thing, too, is that it uh, seems like a hot hot commodity object for, uh, for scalpers as well. Mm. Yeah. No, a- Analog's always had that issue. I, I have a lot of Analog products. I have a Pocket. I have the SNES, the, the NES, and the Genesis. They're such a pain in the ass to get. You either have to order them, pre-order them in advance, and then wait like two years, or uh, you have to get lucky. And their site used to constantly crash when you were ordering things, so I missed it on the first wave of the pocket Ugh. orders because of that. There are what are they? Oh, um, there's also the uh, the this one. This one's more so if you have the consoles, but like a uh, uh, one of my friends showed me captured footage from a. Uh, a retro tink upscaler and it looked like it was through emulator. Yeah. Like those are those are nuts. Yeah, I have a um a retro tink 5X. I want to get one of those. They announced and... the they announced the 4K but it's but for capture it's not really necessary. But it it it's real neat. Um basically anytime I'm going to hook up a retro console now, I I do it through that because yep. it looks good. At, at the New Year's party that we had, we um, plugged up Sonic R to play <laughs> Sonic R, but in HD. Heck yeah. Because, yeah, like, it. Josh had never played Sonic R, and I was like, well, you got to play Sonic R. You got to <laughs> hear the song and use the Saturn 3D pad. And you feel the sunshine. Oh, yeah. So the, the up your day. So they announced the RetroTink 4K. And it has a mode in it that emulates um, a CRT. So it looks as though you're playing it on a CRT. And the only reason it could do that is because it's in 4K. Yeah, but I think the price for the Retro Tink 4K it's, it's, uh, is like a thousand it's, bucks. It's, yep, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, four figures for for the Retro Tink 4K. I use the I use the 5X and it works, but like I feel like a weird glitch with mine. Shocking, I know. Uh, that it just keeps buzzing if i leave it plugged in like if i put it into sleep mode it either turns itself back on or it just makes a loud whining sound oh fun weird yeah like like the the device itself or or like the stuff that's coming through your tv the device itself oh that's weird i hate so. that yeah so i have to unplug it every time I, i'm done using it for stream mm-hmm. <laughs> Carlos, what is an interesting thing that you have picked up recently or been using recently, whether that's like a mm-hmm. piece of equipment or an, like an instrument? Hmm. Because your world is like adjacent to ours, but also a little different than ours. And I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what that's that's what the part of what makes it so cool. Um, huh. Well, the most. So I. For context, I have a lot of instruments. Um, I wish I had a picture I could hand, like, handily, you know, easily grab and show. But I think last time I counted, I have like fifty-five instruments in my basement, um, something like that. And that's that's counting things like, um, like, like the tambourine and the triangle as separate instruments. Actually, if you include those, it's sure. probably like sixty at some point because they're all they're all different things. But it, it's a lot. And the reason I do that is because I I like the process of learning and. It's just nice to like be able to record something quick on a, on a part. Um, what's the most? I mean, I I, up, I have mm. to ask. Oh have yeah, you, have you found a reason to use the didgeridoo I got you for Secret Santa a couple of years I ago? I have. I haven't. I don't think I've seriously used it in a track yet. I have recorded it. I have had fun. I have. I have had fun with it. Um, I think I like like tried to like plug in a different mouthpiece to that and like see what it would sound like but it was like it it uh the t- the the didgeridoo tube is is very wide mm. so so nothing like there wasn't enough of a seal to make anything work 
Um, but what is the... I guess one of the most fun instruments that I got recently, well, I guess within like the last year, um, is a set of spoons. Oh. Do you know Do you know the, about the musical like, spoons? Like the attached ones? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the attached ones. Yeah, so Can... I mean, I... Yeah. Go. Uh, so, uh, in addition to making music with them, have you used them to eat your cereal? Well, no, because I don't want them to rot. Or <laughs> <laughs> have you considered ruining your instrument <laughs> for the have sake you... of consumption? Yeah, I know your saxophone's a two, but like, have you tried using it as a straw? Like, no, I'm no, no, thanks. That's that's not not a good idea. Well, um, saxophone was never made as a like, uh, unless you want to say it's like a, it's like a horn of plenty or a cornucopia. You ever stuff your saxophone full of full of the harvest? There was one time during a concert in <laughs> a concert in um I think in high school when I was playing a uh, baritone saxophone and I like. We were playing Sleigh Ride, like the, the, the for, for our Christmas concert, and I couldn't figure out like why my saxophone like wasn't making any noise, and like that I, I knew what I was doing at that point, and I was like, oh god, what is what is going on? So I had to detach. There's a little neck piece that you can attach that you attach to the saxophone. That's a curved part. So I had to take off the neck, pull off my mouthpiece, and I had to blow it like I had to blow into the neck to get whatever was stuck in there out. And there was just like a bunch of cotton balls stuck oh. inside my my neck piece for some reason <laughs> and i i had no i was like during the concert i was like why the heck is this in here it's not quite a vegetable it's not quite a cornucopia but it was those were um stuck in there and i and i realized it was because um our, our my high school we did like marching band and things like that and uh the month prior we had done like a holiday parade in our city and um a lot of like people decorated their instruments you know like add like reindeer antlers at like lights and things like that so I had like you know put like some maybe made some like I don't know if I did it to my saxophone but um, I had used like a cotton ball to be like Rudolph's red nose but somehow it ended up inside my saxophone like it specifically the part would have caused the most issue because if it was <laughs> oh no because if it was just in the bottom like it's not that big of a deal but if it's in like right at the beginning of the pipe it blocks all the air so I was like what the heck is going on so that was super inconvenient. Um, but I wanted to uh, tell people about spoons in case they're not aware of what we, the musical spoons are. Because, you know, you hear a spoon, you think of a cereal spoon. But um, the spoons are, I actually don't know, like, where they first originated. But they're, like, they're used in a lot of, um, I, I got them in Montreal when I was visiting. Did because... you go to a tree farm? Did you go to a maple tree farm? Because that's where I got mine from when I was a kid. Oh, really? No, I I, uh, I didn't go, like you know on location to a place like that but i think it was i think it was just like a gift shop of like montreal things and apparently there's like a manufacturer i forget what their what their name is but they are they're local to that area and i guess the the spoons are like a um like a a, a local specialty instrument which is very strange to me um but they kind of sound like I, would, I mean like like when you like go like when you do that with your mouth and you clip and you like like clip clop almost like a like a like a really tiny horse you know like a, like a, a horse that <laughs> a, a horse that should be that's way smaller than a horse should be i, I am play the this, tiny horse i play the small <laughs> horse <laughs> i play the i play the piccolo pony um <laughs> so that and, and the spoons you like hit them against your thigh and like they kind of bounce and they hit you you hit your thumb um your, your palm with them and they sound like so um that was a that's a fun little thing i have i don't use it very often but like i have it now and it's it's just good to have them uh, hmm. i went to the Spoons wiki page to see instrument. how many like where it originated from and i got wiki mentions oh here it is from american folk music british folk music canadian folk music greek folk music russian okay. folk music turkish folk music so uh. apparently everyone did it Man, the spoons were the, the spoons were the hit thing. Everybody wanted, everybody was using the spoons. It's like five, like, like or fifty people simultaneously throughout the world being like, "Hey, insert person's name here. Check out what I can do with these two spoons." And they just like all did the exact same thing at the exact same time. Well, it's it's cool because like the because spoons originally like when people were playing them, they were actually just literally just two like metal spoons yeah. or whatever material they were. Um, whatever material they're made out of and people would like you the way to hold them if you don't know is that you take the spoon and like you you hold it and like you you basically hold two in one hand but they're you, the divide, top, you divide them with, you divide them with one of your fingers 
Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like if you're it's like Wolverine but with spoons. You need yeah. to have and the bottom space so that the the two backs of the spoons can hit each other, and make the sound. Yeah, yeah, and the bottom is flipped upside down so that and like they hit each other in a, in a way that's resonant. Um, but like holding them like that and like keeping them in that position is like really hard. So whenever whenever somebody invented the uh, the uh, like the one the onesie of the spoons world, yeah, there's a, there's a picture of the spoons. Yeah, when like yeah. so like the then the two spoons are like put together and uh like they're one solid piece um it uh it makes it way easier to hold so and it's really, it's really fun you really want to wear a one piece of spoons you don't want to go to the beach with a bikini spoon and just be embarrassed i love <laughs> the phrase the onesie spoon <laughs> the onesie the onesie spoon is there another i feel like there's another weird instrument that i've gotten recently you've got to like i feel like you, i yeah you i, I got so a piccolo in general Okay, I'll just. I got a piccolo. I got a castanet machine. Um, I got a. I got a triangle from a metalsmith at a um, at a like a folk festival thing. Just I, he just had a, a, a literally just a triangular piece of metal hanging. I was like, I want that one, and he said, okay. Um, like a ren uh, fair. Yeah, not not quite a ren fair, but like it was like an arts festival. Not 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 full on ren fair. Like there was no, there wasn't any of that um, fest festivity, a uh, festivity. I don't know. Um, Got plenty of boobles and baubles here for you to sample. <laughs> like this triangular piece of metal. Mayhaps it shall make for a sonorous tune. You know, he actually sounded a lot like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I smithed this out of the finest nickels. <laughs> you could make one out of nickels. You could. Probably wouldn't sound great. There's, is there, Wouldn't is a solid there such gold a violin thing? weigh a ton and sound lousy? Solid gold, like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why it's powered by Satan. That's why yeah. it works. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Where does what is this? Devil went down to Georgia. Is that wait? Is that is this canon? No, you you play for a solid gold fiddle. That's what the whole song's about. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, or your that soul. Would... If you're on the well, on the, okay. Uh, the, well, the devil the, wins Johnny's him. soul, and Johnny wins a solid gold fiddle. A solid right. gold fiddle would sound like probably pretty bad. Yeah. Didn't Futurama well, do this idiot. exact? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they did. They, they they exactly did they, exactly that. Wouldn't it weigh a ton and sound lousy? And then like uh when when it came time for Leela to play the solid gold fiddle, he just said she just said here comes the drum solo and then bashed the robot devil over the head with it. Huh. I, I, great, I actually it's a great I have song. never heard that song. I I've never heard it. You've never you heard, heard that song. Devil down to Georgia. I don't think so. Interesting. All right. I'll bet a fiddle of gold wild. against your soul as to think I'm better than you. The devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. That's how the, that's the setup of the song. Yeah. Yep. He was yeah. in a bind. He was way behind, so he's willing to make a deal. Mm. Which means that that implies that there is an entire universe to this where, like, the devil has to get a certain <laughs> amount of souls. The, that's the just the a, Bible. He's on a quota. <laughs> There's he's a, a there's quota. a quota. There he has an organization issue, and he needs to use the souls to power hell, I guess. Otherwise, it freezes over, and then a bunch of shit I, happens that no one can like, control at that point, like pigs flying. But, so you think it freezes over because one of the layers of hell is constantly frozen, so they got to keep the heat on. Yeah, he's not reporting to anyone though. Like it, I I think it's just so everyone under him still respects him like you know satan you haven't brought in a lot of souls lately and he's like i'm sorry i'm gonna go talk to this fiddle playing kid i've been <laughs> depressed get off my back like and also how desperate where is satan like what like he's like out in the woods in louisiana and he's like i just gotta find a soul I and mean, he's in the bible belt he's just like all right there's gotta be someone around here ain't reading that well, damn I mean, book like, like everyone knows the portal to hell is on the outskirts of birmingham also, why does Satan what? have to work in, in, in deals like that? Like, why does it have to be a contest? can he just trick He wants Johnny? to be fair. Remember, he used to be an angel, so he tries to be a little fair. De Steven, you've played D&D. &D. Devils are lawful evil. They have a set of codes and rules that they follow. That's fair. I'll believe it. In fact, there's a sequel to Devil Went Down to Georgia called The Devil Went Back to Georgia. I definitely haven't heard what? that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Devil Went Back to Georgia. Is that 
from the this same. This is also the other version where the devil goes to Jamaica. I haven't heard that one either. <laughs> I, I saw that as I was, as I was uh, googling it. It's called "The Devil Went Back to Georgia." I'm googling it, but it, but it just says it oh, is yeah, a here Charlie we go. Devil, Daniel song. Devil Devil comes back to uh, Devil comes back to Georgia. There we go. Man, this is just sometimes. There is a song, and I don't want to call Charlie Daniels a one-hit wonder because that would be untrue. But sometimes there's a song that like does extremely well, and then the artist tries to recapture that magic. Yeah, Vanilla Ice did that with the Ninja Rap for the Ninja Turtles. There's a Ninja Rap too. <laughs> like the song um, uh, "Convoy." There's a sequel to "Convoy." <laughs> what? Oh, God. Is it where the where there's the a convoy sequel to arrives? "Convoy"? It there's a sequel to "Convoy." Except it's a it's about like driving the the trucks around like the entire world and they like can drive across the ocean. It's like insane. <laughs> it's really insane. Oh my god. And then there is Christmas convoy as well. Yeah, there's honestly I I my greatest wish is that every artist would look at their most popular song and say and make a hmm, sequel of it. What if what if it's time to do another one of these because they're always great. Oh. They are so good. Oh man, there's got to be there there have to be uh there got to be some, you know, like that that like that would just be like incredibly perfect. You know, like Mariah Carey's song, the Christmas song. Yeah, all I want for Christmas is you. And then the sequel is like, actually, I want, I did want more. <laughs> <laughs> actually, could There's I have a not little? that yeah. a lot I want for Christmas. <laughs> actually, I guess that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> now that I have you here, honey, I realize that it's a bit much. <laughs> I just need some space tonight. Go outside and freeze goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> what more can I do? This is... <laughs> All I want for Christmas is solitude. <clears throat> if, if, if you do not leave, here's a lawsuit. <laughs> There's so many ways that, you, that Mariah Carey could go with that. Because it could either be like, actually, no, I don't want you, so I want solitude. Or actually, I did want gifts. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. <laughs> like, having you around is great, but I did have things on my list. <laughs> okay, so I'm superficial. Where the hell are all my gifts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i just hope that mariah carey will have a heart this christmas and choose to give us a sequel to this you know song. you know you know tom like y y if you want to make a sequel to a song you don't have to wait you don't have to, you don't have to wait listen i i have i i'll, I'll tell you a secret i have some play, i have some playbills Dude, I, uh, is, is is this a new Tom and Carlos joint venture of making sequels to popular songs? Tom, I just think the way that the words flow out of your mouth is like nothing I've ever seen or heard before. <laughs> and I think it's just uh, sad that this might not reach as many people as it possibly could. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Man, how much do you think it would cost to have Mariah Carey... <laughs> Sing record. a sequel song. To like all like five hundred dollars. <laughs> it would have to. It would. It would have to be like a like a guarantee of like whatever residuals she gets from all I want for Christmas. Oh my god! I just had the dumbest idea. Could you? Could you do like request a cameo from so have like multiple people <laughs> request cameos from Mariah Carey singing lines and then put together a song? No. You think she would suspect that at some point? I think that would be illegal. You just, that's how you do it. Oh my goodness. That's how you make this happen. This is how you save Christmas. I don't think Christmas needs saving. It's Halloween that needs saving. She did a sequel song with Justin Bieber. Excuse me? Oh. Oh, wait, hold on. Maybe our prayers have been answered. I d may, or, or maybe the monkey All I want for Christmas girl. is you super festive. Song by Justin it, Bieber it, and Mariah Carey. Is it a Carey. sequel or is it just the exact oh, same no. thing? It looks Justin like the Bieber. lyrics look the exact same. Oh no! It's, it, you know, it's it's genres: it's, uh, it's, reggae, pop, holiday. It's Mariah Carey singing the exact same song with Justin Bieber saying unhinged shit in the background. 
fan. Man, uh, what other what other songs could could have sequels though? I I, I like I'm I'm curious. I th- well I mean like uh, has Marek, I think I I actually think that all I want for Christmas is you is probably like in my top five favorite Christmas songs. Like oh, it's I got a pretty one. good song. It is a very it is a very good song. Like just like, very overplayed. I, I think um I I I think there are some songs that are more overplayed. Then that that like it's a balance between like how much it deserves to be played versus how much it gets right. to be played, you know. And I but, think that yeah, I think it has a it has a high value of deserving to get played, and it gets played a lot. But consider 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 the point of view of the retail worker during during the holidays. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the yeah. problem. Retail workers have to deal with it a ton. It's like one of the yeah, most annoying true. things to deal with is hearing that's the same true. song over and over. Wait, I got the perfect sequel song. I got diabetes. <laughs> that pour some sugar on me? Yeah. Okay, I was just making sure because I'm just like, no clue what that. What could that be otherwise? I I just don't. I just didn't. I didn't know the song. I I, I didn't. I thought it was a um. Pour I know, some I thought... sugar on me. Is that Def Leppard? <laughs> I think so. Oh, that's oh that song. Oh, in okay, the name okay, of okay. love, I got diabetes. Where's my insulin? <laughs> Sorry, just I I was paying attention, and yet when you belted out, I have diabetes. Like my brain had to go backwards in time, and being like, you missed something, Stephen. I don't know what you missed. <laughs> But you missed something. <laughs> I did skip a step in saying what it is. Def Leppard for pour some sugar on me. Uh, uh, I I did skip a step in uh, in saying what the se- what the song was a sequel to. It's fine. Oh it was goodness. a fun guessing game that John uh, won. John right won. Right. Yeah, I did it. I remember song. <laughs> Proud of you for. I song. think John wins at like every music guessing game. Mm, no, not really. Maybe it's just because I have so much uh, experience with you guessing game music. I, game music, sure. I've heard a lot of game music because I'm that's the world I'm in. Mm. But like, Def Leppard's not normally on my Spotify playlist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that song. But how about, uh, how about uh, you? How about a, a sequel to "Use Your Love"? Josie's finally back from vacation. <laughs> Guess I'm going to use your love tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no, she found out about our love. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we just... I just want to remind everyone that at the beginning of this podcast, we spent some amount of time with, with Carlos talking about a small church toilet. <laughs> and we've traveled such a great distance to get to where we are now. <laughs> you know the you know that meme where it's like a um like uh please stop sending uh thoughts and prayers my grandpa is too powerful now. Yep. Yep. Someone oh, where where was it? I I lost it. No, where was it? Someone oh uh, it was a a sequel to Don't Stop Believing but in that same vein. Please stop believing. Well, well, well. Grandpa is too powerful. <laughs> <laughs> music is great. Music is pretty good. Music, pretty good. Music is great. Music I'm is great. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Music is music is the way that music is a way to get all those things that you had in your soul that you couldn't figure out how to get out before into the world. Why are you and... guys friends with me? Because <laughs> it's fun. Because you're fun. It's a it's a government mandated. Is, is, is this, uh... <laughs> when does our contract expire? <laughs> I like I work for the actual no, series, no, but y'all are like, yeah, the government did it. It's the government. I've been fault. looking for my disc only contract to shred it, and I can't find it, so I'm just stuck until I, have I can. Photocopies. That's why. <laughs> oh my god. I love the idea. I love the idea that if you lose the contract, you're still bound by it until you <laughs> That's how it works. actually destroy it. 
I had a friend who was gonna dress up as the devil and print fake contracts on a on um uh flash paper. So that way he like and, and like smoke a cigar with it. So that way after people signed it, he touched the cigar to the flash paper and go up and smoke. That would be so cool. Wow. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we got Steven forever because he's never gonna be able to find that contract. I yeah. know it's around here. No, no, I have them all. I keep telling you that. That's why I keep asking you to visit. So this is your only chance. I give you a chance. I have to fair. visit, or I'll never I, be free. I keep give, <laughs> like this is this is my plan to make people come visit, so I don't have to fly anymore anymore. Yeah, come here. Black come man. to Austin. I'm, I'm Jack I'm and I would be happy to see you because Jack lives here too. Not in my house, but he lives in the town. I'm gonna visit John. And there's going to be like a vlog where I visit John, and then shortly after, I will never appear on another disco, <laughs> and everyone will be like, oh, wow, they, he got the contract. <laughs> he did it. He's free. I have it locked up in a bank vault just in case, so. <laughs> I thought you were, were going to go even more extreme with that. Like, there's going to be the, the vlog where I go visit John, and there's never another piece of content from me ever again. <laughs> At that point, then I then people start getting suspicious of me, so I don't need that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's weird because then, like, you start hearing two sets of meowing in the background. And you just have Kepler. <laughs> Kepler's here. Mal's hanging out with us. No idea what's going on anymore. I don't know what happened to Stephen. Where is Stephen? <laughs> He's Stephen free. never was. <laughs> He's not bound to this earth anymore. <laughs> He's been freed now. John can... has given Stephen a sock. <laughs> oh, the no. sock, Stephen is free. Uh... <laughs> that's uh, that that that's uh, that's when you're in your your uh, your square leg form. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always in square leg form. I like how Chaz is saying he's I probably mean, went over to Josh's house. Probably broke into Josh's house again. <laughs> I, oh my listen, god! Can we talk about that? I wanted to, but y'all moved away call. from it. <laughs> listen, I am a good friend. No, <laughs> no, this is an intervention what now. Other, you don't give me the opportunity. Organize, you guys, organize your inventory. <laughs> I organized that boy's items. That. Steven, I wish I liked any piece of media as much as you love Earthbound, because holy shit, I would not commit <laughs> crimes in the name of my favorite piece of media. He, okay, he technically didn't commit a crime because he didn't break into their house. Brandon was, Brandon lives there and Brandon let them in. Brandon wasn't home yeah. at the time, though. Yeah, Brandon wasn't home at the time. I, we got in. I, I was trying to give you an out, John, in case this goes to court. I mean, not John, yeah. Steven. Me, me, I don't need the out. Really... I'm fine. <laughs> Me and Haley know how to get into houses. It's fine. We did fine. We 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 we, we went in there. We organized the items. We left. You should not. Fine. You should not fine. say that on a podcast. I, I would love it. Recorded media. I would. I would Friendly absolutely visit. love it if that. If that. Like that. Um. If like the ring doorbell cam. Well, instead of you just two just walking up to the door was like. Steven, like, nervously looking out for the cops and Haley picking the lock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the thing I actually want to know. This sure. okay. Th uh, this is not a bit. Were you on purpose waiting for him to go take a bathroom break to do this, or were you just going no. in the house and just do it even if he was streaming? No. So this is this is the great part. This is the really really great part. During during Josh's first break, he had uh, he had gotten the heavy bazooka, and he hadn't put it in the first slot. And I told him that he could do it. And once I told him how he had to do it, he was like, Ah, I want to do that. And he started like you know playing. Wait, the so game he and said like, no, and you're like, no, I know better. Well, well, well. It, there's more to it than that. He was he was going through his items to select the heavy bazooka every time he wanted to use it, and he's like, ah, he's like, this sucks, but I'm still not going to change it. And I was like, okay. So then I I had written in chat. I was like, I'm going to change it. So after after the first break, he you know played more of the game, and he said he was going to go on second break, and I told Haley I was like. Let's um, let's go over there and change his inventory. <laughs> Before we so, continue the story, I just want to say, speaking of Haley, she's been saying in the chat that she knows how to lockpick, and she has a lockpick. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I she knows not that I'm recording the, the chat on the side of the stream here, so we, <laughs> she can't remove it from the chat now. So, um, so when whenever Josh was like, "All right, I think I'm going to go on break," like me and Haley jumped over the couch and ran to the car. 
so we could we could go over to Josh's house. Because like they're close, but not close, close. So this took some effort. It took effort, but it was worth it. And when we got there, we get in the door. Um, Dan, we could see Dan working, but Dan did not notice us coming in. So we just like this went past so Dan. This is so weird. <laughs> We, we 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 ran upstairs to Josh's room. Josh's door is closed. And I like very slowly open the door and Josh isn't in there. And I was not expecting Josh to not be in there. So and you just like, went and did it? <laughs> so I went I went in and I was like, huh. Because I was thinking, well, he might be like downstairs on the patio or something, because sometimes he does that during breaks, and I was like, Well, I'm just gonna sit in his chair and start doing this. So I started to do it, and then I could hear him in the bathroom because he's he has a bathroom inside the bedroom. And I was like, oh, he's in the bathroom. And I just assumed he was going to come out at any second. I was like, he's going to come out, and like we're going to be like, oh, we're changing your items. Aha. And I started to like finish up what I was doing. I was I, My heart started pounding because I was like, oh, my God, I'm actually going to get away with this. <laughs> Haley, Haley, like, she dove under a table to hide and then at some point was like i should film this so she just started filming what was going on was she filming uh, from under the table yeah okay i was wondering why the angle was so low so i heard the toilet flush and i was like oh my god i'm running out of time so i'm like quickly trying to finish up the last of the items and then like josh is like whistling or whatever and i'm like so i finish i put it down and then we very like quickly but quietly leave the room and then run out of the house and get back home. And, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> On screen like, right now is a Photoshop of Stephen and Haley from the da- from the door cam, and so, it's, it's got the X Files logo on it. It's blurred even more. <laughs> there was there was no plan at the time to like, oh, I'm gonna do this without Jepson knowing. Like I just assumed that he you was just assumed be that there. he would catch you at some point. Yeah, I thought I honestly thought that he would just be in his room. Like I was going to open up the door and he would be there and I'd be like, "I'm here to change your items for you." And that would be a funny thing for the viewers. We come out of break and I'm just there and I'm like, "I'm changing it for Josh." Instead, he was in the bathroom. He was only in the bathroom for like less than a minute. Like the timing on everything was beautiful. It was great. It was so great. See, usually like when I'm playing Hitman. Like you got to you really got to learn the patterns of the people in the game in order to get anywhere. You didn't do that. You just went in willy-nilly. Like and you didn't you didn't even have to kill Josh. It's true. Josh is still alive. Yep. I know. Yeah. I played I I played Hitman with him yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, so no, there was no plan of like it's not like me and Haley were waiting outside the door like oh I See cuz that's what peace. I envisioned. I envisioned you would plan to try to do this when he was on a break. Like the fact, so the, well, I like, mean, I can't tell if it's better or worse that your plan was like, oh, I was gonna just walk in on him and do it, but he wasn't there, so I just did it anyways. I can't tell if it's better <laughs> or worse. Like, it it was during a break, but I didn't think that he would be in the bathroom during that. That was extra lucky. So things went things went very well. It is an extremely funny stream. It is an extremely funny vlog. Like <laughs> everyone won. <laughs> The as best far was as his, I'm concerned. What, what, the best was his reaction to like to like the picture that Haley sent well, him. Of well, that's the thing, chair. though. I'd be so freaked out at that point. I'd be like, "All right, you're never getting in my house again." At that point. Well, so that's that's the thing, right? Like, obviously, I respect Josh's privacy, and if Josh ever told me not to do something like that, I wouldn't. But because there's like a little precedent for me doing these sorts of things, and the pranks that the I do are precedent. Aren't I've done it before. So, I know, like, you it's know, your third time. Yeah, so like because I've done that. There's... Haley, Haley just said you can't stop us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, be- because of that, there is you know there's a sense of of uh, you know an expectation that it's something that could happen. I'm not going to do it any other time. Only when he's streaming, and it's it's a it's a mutual benefit because it makes his streams very exciting because it's like oh Christ Jesus, Stephen could just break in. Um, and then it also makes you're the phrasing exciting. it as break in now. You're doing this yourself. As, okay, okay, S- Stephen. I I remember some of, like your your really old vlogs and like you know the times where you'd hide in Alex's closet to give him a scare. Does this bring you back to those times? Um, a little a little bit, but I think this is actually better because Josh has never pulled a knife on me. 
<laughs> how did uh, he, Alex he pulled a knife on me. How, which, did, how did he counter your trick? Yeah, um, I prefer I prefer it more when people don't pull knives on me. <laughs> Generally. Generally. So what Generally. you're saying is you learned your lesson for a decade and then changed your mind? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Basically. Just making sure. The older I get, the more I forget. The more I want to break and enter. <laughs> Good lord. Anyway, I'm sure everyone's got a story about going into their friends' homes and giving them a, sp a little spooky scare. It's it's fine. Maybe someday. Uh, oh. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt I'll ever I'll ever do something something like that to anybody. Haley <laughs> says our chaos should not be in the same room. It is bad. <laughs> we do egg each other on for things like this. There's, it's too much chaotic cryptid energy. There you go. It's fine. I, I, I do like how now it's just becoming cryptid energy. Like you two, you two are now officially cryptids. Yeah, yeah. My my favorite my favorite thing was that I've seen um, you documented on the SCP website. The the uh, the. That that image of us on the door cam got posted to Discord, and someone was like, "Ah, we'll never figure out who the six foot six and four eleven person are. We'll never know." <laughs> can we do can we do a bumper for TRG Coliseum? It's like an America's Most Wanted thing for you and Haley. We could. That is a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say below that? Me and the boys. Beans. <laughs> looking for beans. Just looking for beans. Looking for beans. Wait, is that how it looked like normally on the on the cam? No, they they blurred yeah. it so they didn't kind of like. No, themselves. no, 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 no. Actually, I only blurred like the background. I did not blur us at all. That oh. is straight out of the camera. Oh, <laughs> that is what I look like in real life. I am <laughs> naturally blurry. Yeah, that's it's weird. I've never actually we've been in the same room like plenty of times. I've never actually seen your eyes before. Yep. Because they're all blurred. That's yep. why. Ring camera, baby. Uh, all right. Good we... God. I think we should wrap up before we yeah. before we break before uh, Josh breaks into Steven's I'm house. I'm so glad I got to hear about this tale of espionage. Oh my, oh my god, god, I'm so glad. Fantastic. I wasn't sure. I was really hoping we were going to get a chance to talk about it, but I tried to do it earlier and people pushed away from us. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not bringing it up. <laughs> you got your chance. My, my chat's been like, tell them about the dream girl. I'm just like, no, no, I'm not going to get a chance to talk about the intervention. We're not going to get a chance to talk about that either. All right, talking points for this episode of Disc Only. Sax incarnate. School cannon. Brown note. Hip hip bidet. Holy trinity. Window shopping. Socks and chip clips. Girthy reed. <laughs> Eggy Sammy. <laughs> Big bang broccoli. It was there from the start of the universe. Pet drum set. Walking magnet. Cotton ball neck. It's what they refer to in the South as a neck beard. Onesie spoon. Devil's quota. And friendly break in. <laughs> Stephen George, the friendly break in. Carlos, since I you're mean, our guest this month, you want to tell us what you got going on while we talk about friendly break ins? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't currently have any break ins planned. Um, but I don't know. That could change. I know I've seen some instruments in people's houses that I would want. But <laughs> <laughs> wow! What about breaking two electric boogers? Everyone wow. on this podcast is gonna get arrested one of these days. We're on a list now. Yay! We're on a list. Um. Uh. Uh. Only thing I have to promote is uh, I might have a YouTube video coming out in a week or two. It's been a while since I've done that, so I might have one coming soon. I love a Carlos YouTube video. It's a um, big, YouTube it's channel. a big one. I'm, I'm and sorry. It, it, it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be me being a vlog of me going to my local music store at at the cover of night with a ski mask on. It's not. Gonna be that. <laughs> I wouldn't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm just not gonna film that one. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna film that. But yeah. Somebody posted uh, like on Twitter the the precedent, and it was just a gif of a hand reaching in to give Josh an egg. 
And that Listen, would be Steven's hand, I do believe. I come at you fast <laughs> with an egg. <laughs> yeah, the second egg, I do believe, is the case, because you dropped the first one. <laughs> I... Mm. I it, I really feel like Mal dropped the egg, but that is neither Someone here nor in the there. Group. Someone in the group dropped the first egg. <laughs> that video is going to be on Insane in the Rain music on YouTube, the, the one that Carlos was uh, was talking about. <laughs> yes. Kinda, it was kinda, a kinda team over. fumble. I think that is actually the correct answer. Here we go. It, it was a team fumble. It's a group effort. Tom, what you got going <gasps> on? Uh, I'm, I'm a VTuber now, but Con not all the time. So wow. some, so some, some streams will be VTuber. Some streams will not. Kind of based on a whim, or if I really don't feel like doing my hair. Um, but uh, but yeah. So uh, get ready for that. I don't know what I'm doing this month. I just came off of a big subathon, and I'm tired. Amen. I've been sleeping twelve hours a night since then. So I should probably figure out something with that, so I can actually function during the daytime and actually go to my HOA meeting. Um. But other than that, we <laughs> or got, not? Is that why you're not going? We're still doing Pokemon Infinite Fusion Quagsire only run, which I think a new episode's going up tomorrow. YouTube.com/slash Tom Fox. Uh, we got a lot of the vlog, uh, the vods from uh, from the uh, uh, the marathon going up. Um, you know, we got our Among Us. I'm, I finished a Pikmin on stream, and I just got to edit the videos, and I got to figure out something new to move on to. So I don't know. I'm just gonna try and get more new stuff for 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 forever and a day. YouTube.com slash Tom Fox, twitch.tv slash Tom Fox. Promote the socials. Steven George, whose house are you breaking into this week? <laughs> uh well, uh yeah, I think I think Josh is actually going out of town, so I guess I'll be bored. Um it's our normal stuff. We're doing breakfast stream on on Tuesdays and Thursdays at at 9 a.m. Mao and I are still playing through Pikmin on Tuesday afternoons. So much Pikmin love, I love it. We've been, we're, we're working through it. It's it's taken a bit. Mao had, Mao had surgery, so she's been having, she's been recovering, and we haven't been able to do, like, as long of sessions as we used to, but also we're getting it done, so, like, we're getting there. Mm. Um, Thursdays is Starfield. Thursday at 1 p.m. I've been playing Starfield, which is very fun. And then Fridays, we're still working through Zelda. But the thing that I need to, to tell people about the most is that this month is Extra Life. So October 28th, the last Saturday of the month, is Extra Life. It is our 12th year doing Extra Life. We have raised, so far, over the last 12 years, uh, $550,000 for um, my hometown children's hospital. We are hoping to raise another hundred grand this year. Uh, we are playing GameCube Wii and Wii U, so you can send in a donation with the name of any North American GameCube Wii or Wii U title. We have the full libraries, and uh, the games with the most money every thirty minutes get played. It is so much fun, and is also kind of why this podcast exists. So yep. Yep. check it out. It's a it's a fun time. John, what is your community going to push for this year? We had two games we were talking about, um, but I'm going to need chat to remind me. I only remember the GameCube one. What was the other one we were talking about? Because the GameCube one was Muppets Party Cruise. But oh, what... we've played that on have an you, extra You life have before. played that. Okay, so chat thought you hadn't. They, someone said they checked the, thre the spreadsheet what? and said you hadn't. We played it, Cast... we played it, for, a, for, we played it for a TRG bonus stream. Yeah, we did that. Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Castlevania Judgment that, was the other game. So we were going to push for Castlevania Judgment, and then we were going to push for uh, Muppets Party Cruise. Oh, actually, yeah. I don't think I've played... Okay, we haven't done Muppets Party Cruise on Extra Life. It's that I've done it with y'all, and I yeah. thought in my head that we it was for Extra Life. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. so those those are the two games our community is pushing for this year. Uh, however, there's a little, there's a little, uh, hindrance in that as, uh, that exact same weekend, I am also going to be at a separate charity event helping raise money for dementia research. Cause I'm going to be at Indie Land this year, mm. helping out my buddy Gerard on the exact same weekend. I mean, uh, all charity is good charity. So uh, I should be there either digitally or in person, whichever happens. Uh, but I'm going to be helping raise money there. So we'll be working on that. Uh, otherwise, I'm on my normal stream schedule for the most part for the rest of the month. Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays. Tomorrow's stream, 
will be the continuation of Gotham Knights, and it will also be the continuation of Dreamwatch 2023 as we tell the latest story of Blossom uh, and the weird, weird stretch of dreams we've had in a row that have all interconnected and uh, how it's affecting reality now. Uh, so interesting stuff to talk about tomorrow. Uh, otherwise, I love that. that's pretty much it. Dan, what about you? Um, the usual twitch.tv slash motion Dan. Um, but also I'm going to be there for extra life helping with Steven. The game I'm choosing, uh, is, uh, not only Lego star Wars, the complete saga for Wii, but also Barbie and her sister's puppy rescue. Nice. Cause it nice. looks bad. So you're not, you're not, not pushing a for a, you're not uh, pushing for a three fur on that party babies game. Uh, maybe <laughs> I mean, if, if, if you want to do imagine party, baby, party, Party, Parby, Parby, babies. Par- yeah, Parvo Sorry, babies. Yeah. Imagine, Par- imagine, Par- imagine, Par- Parvo, cool. imagine Parvo babies. Wow! I walked over to the shelf to pull Barbie and her sister's puppy rescue for the Wii U off of the shelf, and this looks like a disaster. Exactly. So please, <laughs> thanks, don't Mattel. Hate towards it. It's not from Mattel. It's from some other company. That's. Uh... Yeah, Mattel didn't develop the game. Probably. <laughs> that Mattel would be wild. Prob- oh, did they actually? Okay. I mean, they did some of them, I thought. More, more of the older ones. Is is that the super rare one? No, that's the, that's the DS one or 3DS one that's like stupidly expensive. Yeah. I think the most expensive Wii U game is Devil's Third. Really? I think so. Huh. Yeah, Devil's Third's up there. We played. We actually played Devil's Third for Extra Life last year. And that was a hoot because everyone dubbed all of the characters. Oh, but the game is already dubbed so well, by which I mean piss poorly, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Devil's Third. Everyone is... had a Midwestern accent. It was great. Oh, you're Devil's right. Third it is, is the highest. Yeah, Three hundred dollars co- complete in box. Yeah, it's the highest, uh, most expensive Wii U game that's not a collector's edition or a bundle. It's a it, one thing that's wild about it is I was working at GameStop when this uh, when Devil's Third was uh, was. Um, like being sold when it was like what, what like the marketing and everything for it, and it was being pushed really hard in that GameStop like closed circuit TV. So and and it got very mediocre reviews when it came out. So I'm surprised it's as as high up as it is. My store only got one copy. Like we were like they were yeah we did it, not like, get crazy. a lot. Yeah, I think I bought mine in I bought my copy in like the autumn of autumn of 2019. So like right before like the price started spiking on it, I I, st- I still have it sealed actually. Oh, video yeah. games were a mistake. <laughs> Devil Star is not a good game, but it's also so weird. It's kind of an amazing game. It's one of those ones where you're like, it would not win any. It, the only awards it would win are for comedy. Yeah, it's like it tries to play itself so seriously, but it gets to the point where it basically it comes off as like hilarious. It's like the uh, dude from Final Fantasy Origins where he's just trying to be so cool and, and chill, but he comes off as trying so hard that it's hilarious. All right. That's going to do it for the show, everybody. As always, I'm going to try to aim. I guess. What? What's up? Sorry. I was, I, was, I was looking at it. It's like I didn't realize that it came out in 2015. I mean, it was a Wii U uh, game. Right, but uh, but I wasn't working at GameStop at that point, so oh. I have no idea like what I was thinking of. And also, the multiplayer also got released separately on Steam. For some reason. Really? Yeah. That's really bizarre. A special thank you to Popsky for our theme song, Prism Shard for our logo, Paper Pennies for the beautiful art in our intro, and our producer is Motion Dan. Um, November. How are we feeling about November? I can do the first Tuesday. Oh, first that's... Tuesday of November. First Tuesday of November is the seventh. Yes, that is the day before my birthday. Hey, yeah. and you'll There's... be you'll be eighteen. There will be a... <laughs> finally. Uh, there will be a small chance, very you know, very 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 small chance that we'll have a repeat of last year, and Stephen will fall asleep in the middle of the podcast again. Extremely high chance. Man, it was like jet lag. I am so old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I can't do this anymore. I'm like I'm gonna do you. it. I'll do it. I'll do it for the kids, but like I'm so old. 
God. I hate every time that someone younger than me is like, I can't do this anymore. I'm just like, I'm older than you. Shut up. Emil does this I'm all the time. I'm not that much younger than you. you. Also, that doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> your, 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 your joints ache. Your bones hurt. I just, I just today made an appointment for physical therapy because my legs all screwed up. S Steven, are you sure you're just not? No, I got I got to do the same thing. Is it your knee? It's my knee. Yeah. It's your and knee. Also, and also my hip. It's, it's my. Knee I've got hip. tendinitis. Oh my god, you guys! Please wow. take care of yourselves. <laughs> I'm I'm doing the best I can. That's it developed slowly, John. I didn't know what was happening. For. I'm older than both of you. <laughs> it happens, Carlos John. Right. That's, that's why you do physical therapy. We're doing I, this yeah, is the all, longest I, outro we've <laughs> ever had. I have also gone to physical therapy for my knee. We, it's, it's it's popular. Everybody does. It. You can feel better. Things happen to your body. You don't get to control them. Carlos, Haley had a thanks, rip thanks for out. hanging out with us today. Hopefully you, you had a good time. You're welcome. Thank you, Tom, for the saxophone. Is that the girthy tone or the floppy tone? Disappointed! Okay, um, Carlos, this is the part where we pretend like we don't know that uh, it's live. Mm. Wait, pretend? What? Oh yeah, this is the, we've actually just been talking to each other. There's we have the stream hasn't been live. This I think time. that was yeah. somewhere in between girthy and floppy, like it was mm. gloppy. Uh, gloppy. They have a word it for it, and I don't want to say it on stream. But <laughs> yes, it's Ass masked. Flaccid. <laughs> Flaccid was what I was thinking. Yeah. Um. Mm -mm. Please don't like play the saxophones. Learn to play the flaccid saxophone. The flaccophone. The flaccophone. <laughs> the floppiest instrument. Bye, everybody. Bye.